Hello good people of the interweb, painters and decorators, sprayers, I'm back with you after a bit of a bit of a break from talking about this spray gun. Um, can you remember the last video I did on this spray gun? It was um, explaining um, about the 3M PPS um, crit release system. Um, it's got one needle look on the previous video it'll tell you all about it I'll just show you the what the box is that's what we're looking at and I said I'd do a review of actually trying it out so I'm at the workshop I've got a bit of paint in the cup I've got the gun set up I've got my compressor set up I'll show you that in a minute and uh, let's see what it's like now I must say I've not had much time to use this it's just more of a practice you can see I've done some sample sprays there and I'm, I'm actually looking upon it as what it's like as a spray gun if you got the if you've got this gun you might be tweaking the settings a little bit more to get out of it what you need to get out of it but for now I'm just trying it as an ordinary layman painter and decorator who does spray in what is this gun like if we were to use it now if you if you have watched my previous video I think this gun retails about four or five hundred quid that's the full kit and that's the cups the filters the crit release um, nozzles the uh, spray tips now phone. let's cancel that obviously somebody wanted me in London because it came up London um, it's all mentioned in the previous video. Um, quick release tips, the beauty of this gun is it's lightweight and it's really lightweight, it's really nice. You've got your spray tips, you've got your orifice um, sizes, multiple orifice sizes, you've got your gravity cup. Um, there's also the um, fittings that you can actually do the um, suction cup underneath. I've not got the suction cup, I've only got the gravity. So we're just trying it out, see what you think, uh, see what I think and um, let's have a bit of a review. Thank you. Back with you after that break so where was i got the spray gun we're just reviewing it um different orifices different sizes go from a what was it a, a, a 1.1 up to a, a 2 um size it's a quick release there's just one needle you just wipe the needle clean and you swap these caps the air caps it's all built in uh, that's all in the previous video we're just looking at reviewing what it sprays like now i've got i don't know you can see if i can can you see down there at the workshop of just there I've got my 24 litre um, what, what do you call it Gretlin Gretlin compressor I'm probably saying it wrong without reading it top of my head it's Gretlin um, 24 litre compressor um, from the Sprayman UK again really good value there about six seven hundred pounds brilliant compressor 24 litres I'm hoping that's enough um, power from that to actually run this gun because there's been some um, question mark over whether there's enough airflow for this gun now I'm going to try it I've had a bit of a practice I can get paint through it which is a good thing and um, we just was just seeing what it's like I'm using a 1.6 um, air cap HVLP 1.6 you can, can you just see it there 1.6 now the paint I'm using is some um, Helmi undercoat Ticarilla Helmi undercoat I've tipped a bit in there, not a lot, and I've put some water to it. Now I've mixed it up, how I mix up paint, um, nothing scientific, how I mix up paint for when I'm spraying. It's a case of trial and error. If it feels a bit too thick, you add a bit of water. I like to see um, the mixing stick with the paint running off it nicely back into itself. I don't want it like a thick melted ice cream or um, double cream, whipping cream that folds into itself. I want it nicely running back into itself this is nicely running back into itself so I'm actually happy for what I think the paint needs to be you might tell me something different there might be more scientific ways of getting your paint but for now that's how I've done it um, it's in a gravity feed pot I've got my pressure now my pressure is probably higher than what I'd normally want to be spraying at I've got it up to 80 psi now again if somebody's got this gun or got this set up can you tell me 
is the a better optimum um, PSI to use. I tried it 40, 45, which is spray some of the Lumitech stuff with. That wasn't enough, I've had to crank it up. So I'd rather be higher and see that I can get some spray from it and then turn it down. So for this um, purpose of this video, I'm at 80 PSI. That's 80 PSI or so on the machine um, coming out through the hose. And this is to the gun. Now, obviously I can regulate fan pattern and um, paint flow on the gun. Uh, is that paint flow, fan pattern, top of my head, can't remember. We'll try it on there. So let's just have a fiddle, let's see what it's like and see what you think and then I'll give you my thoughts. I'd also like to um, show you how I can whip off this top and swap it for some more paint and swap the air cap because that's the feature of this gun. It's all quick release and all you need to do for cleaning out is wipe the needle Watch on my previous video, wipe the needle and the air cap can be rinsed through with some water. Now, I've not got a, a special um, spray shop rinsing bucket canister. It would be a case that I'd probably put some water in one of these um, pots and flush it through and just rinse it under the tap. But we're not doing about washing it out, we're just trying it out. So there's the 3M gun. I've shown you what it is. It's the Performance Industrial um, Spray Gun System. And I'm going to just try, you, you know me door. You know, very controversial door. It's here. It follows me everywhere now. It's the door you're going to see on everything. I'll put some paper on it. I'll try it on the paper. I'll show you the fan pattern. You can go from a little spot to a wide. Obviously, the wider you go, you've got to alter your pressures of your paint because obviously it's wanting more airflow through it. But for now, let's just see how we go and see what you think. Now, shall I put my mask on? I've got my mask. My mask is here, but I don't think I'm going to be able to talk to you. We are outside. I'm not spraying a lot. I'll take my chance. You can comment, like, thumbs down, but I need to speak to you. So my mask is here. Can you see me? I've got overalls on. And I'm just going to keep away from any overspray. Not that there's going to be a lot of overspray. We've only got a bit of paint. Right. Right. I'm just going to go do a spot of paint. Can you see that? It's coming to a big spot, so let me just... The top dial regulates from a spot to a wider fan. Now, don't forget, depending on which way your horns are facing, if your horns are facing like that, your spray fan's going to be across. If you turn it round, it's going to be that way. I can't it that way, if you get me. So, at the minute, that's going to be a vertical, let's show you. I'm trying to keep, I'll say about 10 inches away. Obviously when you do your own spraying, you'll probably be a bit closer with HVLP, depending on how it is. If, it, if you find you're putting too much paint on, it very slightly. Can you see that? It's vertical. I don't think you can see it on there. It's a little bit splatty around the edge. That could be just the mix of paint. I'm not too worried. So. Width of that, what do you think? It's probably about a two inch width. Should we see if we can get it a bit wider? We're a bit wider on that, we're going to three or four inch. Let's try. A little bit splattery, but that's probably just four to five inch. I'm quite happy with that. That's not bad at all. Now, the next one paint flow the bottom one's paint flow so that's how much paint's going to be allowed to go through the gravity cup to the needle there so I'm going to really turn it all the way in so nothing should come out of that there's nothing so I'm gradually opening it out can you see I'm opening out it's coming that's probably about right and we're actually going over the same spot so a bit more than that, a bit splattery. It's a little bit splattery, open it up. Not too bad, a bit more. Now I could do with the I could do with the compressor kicking in. 
I've dropped my air pressure. Why is my air pressure dropped? Probably needs turning on. It's a good job that 24 litre holds enough pressure. That's a proper schoolboy error. So we're waiting for the pressure just to build back up. Over there. So my air pressure's built up there. Actually, I don't think that's spraying bad. What I'm gonna do, let's get Doris the door out and let's spray the door, see how we go with it. I'll just show you how to spray a door with a spray gun. If you've watched previous videos, you know how to paint a, a door with a brush. Do the mouldings first, then do the panel. So I think really we could do the same with a spray gun, don't you? So let's see how we go. Moldings first. I have to say, that's not bad at all. I don't think you can see it as good as me. I would say it's probably putting a little bit too much paint on, so I'm just going to dial that down a bit, dial it down. That's paint, so we'll do the next panel, shall we? Do the mouldings, then the panel. Oh, wind's picking up. Right, mouldings, panel. not bad and do you know what the USP of this it's lightweight now the only weight I've got is actually the hose it's not much paint in there so I'm done how quick am I doing that do another one Don't forget when you're spraying, don't be arcing it, just keep it parallel with the surface that you're working on. So, I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with that. That's two panels. What should we do? Should we do the um, bottom panels? Let's shrivel you down a bit. I'm loving it. Right, let's finish the bottom ones off. Not bad, not bad, please. Obviously, once you get into your spraying, don't forget your 50-50 overlap. Don't want to be putting too much paint on that it runs. But, some nice panel there. So I've done, what, five panels. Let's just do this bottom one. at all is it quite pleased with that i'm well, probably spraying a bit too quick actually uh, moving a bit too quick but the paint's quite thin i've thinned it down so what i would say is you can always just dial it in so you're not putting too much paint on slow down so you don't get any misses but don't forget this is undercoat i'm quite happy with that it's not bad at all i think what we'll do should we do the outside in a different color i think we can do that i'm going to put you on pause 
I'm going to take you over to the workshop, we'll swap the paint over. The paint that I'm going to use, I've already got the paint out, I'm going to go to a 1.8 needle um, air cap from this 1.6, so that will allow a bit more paint on straight away. And again, I'm still spraying it 8 psi and it seems to be working nicely at that. Right, let's put you on pause. Here we are, right. So, this is, you see, this is the spray man compressor I've got. You can see, I'm just spraying. You see that there? Yeah, I can't see it. So just over 80 psi. Right, so here's my paint that I've been using. Look at the camera, camera works terrible. I could do with my little um, camera man, couldn't I? It's not here. So, my next colour, I'm going to use this Farron Ball, because we all love Farron Ball to spray. This is the Hague, is it William Hague Blue? Modern eggshell. Now, if you don't know about Farron Ball paints, if you're doing eggshelling, the modern eggshell is the one to go for. It's what they used to use as the old floor paint. It dries really rock hard, but don't forget, use the Farron Ball undercoat and then two top coats, and you can't go wrong. It's where people make the mistake, right? So, that's that. That's the paint I've been using. I've got an old tin of Helmy undercoat, right? And this is me, pot of Hague Blue. So I'm going to swap that across. Now I've not turned the unit off because all I'm doing is just uncoupling the cap at the top. So if I can position you somewhere, I don't know whether I can see. I hope I don't drop the camera. Is that alright? You can see me like that. Yeah. So all it is, quick release. So the quick release is on there. So turn it upside down, turn it. And that's off dead easy now don't forget I'm taking the air cap off so, come straight off I'm going to dump that in some water so we're going to clean it out and all I need to do is get a little bit of cloth just wipe that off so my needles actually been cleaned I'll put that down I'll just go and get me There's the pot I'm going to put my paint in and then I want a filter on top. Now if you watched the previous video there's a fine filter which is the blue and then a little bit uh, bigger open filter which is the white and that's what I want so let's go and get one of those. Sorry I'm back. Right so there's the blue we don't need that. That was if you're doing lacquers varnishes really thin stuff blue. I've just got the white so what I'm going to do just going to put that onto the top of there, screw it in, that's nicely on, tight, and then this, the quick release, this goes back on to the gun there, and then turn it, it's a bit stiff because it's new, turn it, get it in place, go it upside down, right, it's there, get it on. Turn it all the way. You see me? Yeah, we're in focus. Turn it all the way till it locks in. That's tight. And then don't forget when you're putting your paint pot on, don't turn it upside down that way. Put the gun onto it. So I'm putting the gun onto it like that. Getting it on. Make sure it's all lined up. We're turning it around and that's locked in. So turn it that way up. There's the paint. Not got a lot, and that's a 1.8 air cap. So the needle's exactly the same, which is good. And I'm going to move you back over there. And let's do the door, right? You see the door? I don't know how good it shows up. Not bad. It's probably a little bit wet, but it's not bad at all. Lock you in. I'm gonna get you in a bit closer. Yeah. So we're still at that 80 psi. I'll just do a little bit of test on the black card next to it. That's coming out. Coming out really quick. That is. 
well it will do because it's the 1.8 right so i just want to turn my cat around because i want up and down and that will give me a vertical that way so up and down Too bad, it's probably a bit narrow. Let's just see how we go. Right, shall we spray the door? Oh, I'm gonna lose the battery, so five, one, three, two, two. Back, battery gone. Well, as I say, move you across. We're painting the door with a sprayer like we would a spray, with it like we would a brush. So, let's see how we go. bit rubbish that let's dial it in a bit so we haven't got much paint because it's a 1.8 it's probably more on so I'm dialing it all the way down so nothing comes out me down there I've just dialed it in a bit all right going across the sides because we're doing it doing it like a brush Going a little bit quick. If anything, I just need to get a bigger spray fan pattern. It's dropping down to the bottom. Right, turning my nozzle around so it's a vertical inside. think not bad um, criticism for me I probably want to get my paint consistency a little bit thinner probably get my air pressure right um, obviously I'm spraying it 80 I could do with a little bit more time tweaking it do I want a bit a little, little bit more do I want a little bit less but that 24 litre machine is spraying from it um, would it go straight out on a job and try it straight away? Probably not. I'd want a bit more practice like I'm doing now. It is spraying. It's a little bit splattery, which sometimes can be your paint's a bit too thick. It might be a little bit um, thick at the 1.8. Might just want a little bit um, more water put into it. Not too worried about that. I'm just trying it to see what it's like. I've shown you that how quick I can swap between a 1.6 and a 1.8. Obviously. Once you get into it, you'd be a bit slicker than what I was doing it, holding a camera trying to, trying to talk to you. But yeah, this, this is what you call a quick release system. I can quick release the cup 
I can quick release the orifice and the needle um, air cap there. Obviously the needle stays in place, just wipe it with a bit of cloth just to clean it off when you're swapping between paints. But I've gone from a green undercoat to a William Haig blue foreign ball modern eggshell. So I've gone from an undercoat to an eggshell with the same gun, same needle, it's just the air cap that's changed and obviously the gravity feed. I'm quite quite impressed with that. Obviously the spray technique's not there, I'm not showing you spray technique, am I? I'm not actually selling it you selling it you for spraying. If I'd got my other HVLP out, which I don't like the back of my hand, or even my airless, my um, GXFF airless, I'd um, whiz over that door. Now we've done tongue in cheek painting that door like painting it like a brush if you were doing this with a, a sprayer obviously get your fan pattern right you want your 50% overlap you go top to bottom up and down up and down you could probably go left to right left to right and then up and down and finish it um, if you're giving a couple of coats that's people's technique could be different but you really want to be doing these in one sweep up and down you don't want to be stopping you want it up and down up and down and then that'd be it come back to it when it's dry another coat you might get away with one coat depends how thick your paint is and how good your spraying is but other than that I'm actually quite impressed with that it's probably not something I'll go to straight away I need to practice more with it but do you know what I love the weight of it I love how it looks I love how everything's quick release and the easy cleanup I mean all I'm going to do is just wash these pots out in some water and reuse them again if you're using your cellulose stuff your oil based you'd probably say don't bother washing them out just bin them and that's a characteristic of this you can just um, throw those throw away pots away they come like this and I've got three there come like this you see if I come like this you can swap them um, in and out between paints throw them away when you don't want them I was telling you about if you've got a, a suction cup underneath they're the adapted can you see that they can't yeah they're the adapted air caps that then have a hose coming off the bottom that goes to your air pot, uh, your paint pot underneath. But for the purpose of this, this is a nice um, gravity feed and you can use it in all directions. It's not going to leak anywhere because there's no air cap valve at the top or anything, so you can move it about. But no, I'm pretty impressed with it. If you can get your hands on one to try, I would try it, see what you think. But for the money, 500 quid, a lot of money. If you're new into spraying, you're probably not going to spend 500 quid straight away on a gun like this. If you've already got a spray shop, if you've already spraying furniture and you, you know how to use spray equipment, this might be something that you want to look into because you'll probably know more about mixing your paints and what you can do than I do. But for now, I think this is pretty good. Practice, 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 that's the key. So for now, I'm just going to turn that door around and have a bit more practice but you can go and um, go online and probably look at buying one if you want but thanks for watching thumbs up comments subscribe see this door again in the not too distant future.